Dobro dan. That, that exhausts my Croatian, so I'm sorry. And, I, and, it's, and it's even wrong because it's evening. But, uh, so the rest I'm, I apologise is in English. There is a double spooking the world, the double of, extract, of abstraction. The fortunes of states and armies, companies and communities depend on it. All contending classes, the landlords and farmers, the workers and capitalists, revere yet fear this relentless abstraction of the world on which their fortunes yet depend. All the classes but one, the hacker class. Whatever code we hack, be it programming language, poetic language, math or music, curves or colorings, we create the possibilities of new things entering the world. In art, in science, in philosophy and culture, in any production of knowledge where data can be gathered, where information can be extracted from it, and where in that information new possibilities for the world are produced, there are hackers hacking the new world out of the old. While hackers create these new worlds, we do not possess them. That which we create is mortgaged to others and to the interests of others, to states and corporations who control the means for making worlds we alone discover. And yet we don't quite know who we are. While we recognise our distinctive existence as a group, as programmers, as artists or writers or scientists or musicians, we rarely see these ways of representing ourselves as mere fragments of a class experience that is still struggling to express itself as itself, as expressions of the process of producing abstraction in the world. <coughs> Geeks and freaks become what they are negatively through the exclusion by others. But hackers are a class, a virtual class, a class as yet to hack itself into manifest existence as itself. Hackers as a class are both producers and product of abstraction. To abstract is to construct a plane upon which otherwise different and unrelated matters may be brought into many possible relations. It's through the abstract that the virtual is identified, produced and released. Now hackers must sell their, I mean our, capacity for abstraction to a class that owns the means of production, the vectorless class, the emerging ruling class of our time. The vectorless class is waging an intensive struggle to dispossess hackers of their intellectual property. Patents and copyrights all end up in the hands, not of their creators, but of the vectorless class that owns the means of realising the value of these abstractions. To hack is to produce something more than intellectual property. The hack produces both a useful and a useless surplus. The useful surplus goes into expanding the realm of freedom wrested from necessity. The useless surplus is the surplus of freedom itself, the margin of free production unconstrained by production for necessity. The production of a surplus creates the possibility of the expansion of freedom from necessity. But in class society, the production of a surplus also creates new necessities. Class domination takes the form of the capture of the productive potential of society and its harnessing to the production not of liberty but of class domination itself. The class struggle returns again and again to the unanswered question, property, and the contending classes return again and again with new answers. As Marx puts it, to paraphrase only slightly, who are the advanced forces in any social movement, those who ask the property question? In our time, it may be those who, in addition to asking the property question, design areas in which that question may be asked. And yet information like land or capital becomes a form of property monopolised by a ruling class. In this case a class of vectoralists, so named because they control the vectors along which information is abstracted. Just as capitalists control the material means with which goods are produced and pastoralists the land with which food is produced. The vectoralist class rules by subordinating the production of goods to the circulation of information. The leading corporations divest themselves of their productive capacity, as this is no longer a source of power. The power lies in monopolising intellectual property, patents and brand, and the means of reproducing their value, the vectors of communication. I mean, so if anybody is uh, wearing Nike shoes, Nike does not make shoes, right? They manage a brand. They manage marketing. They manage logistics. But the actual making of the shoe is not their problem. That's subcontracted out to somebody else. And that, I would argue, is a kind of new model of controlling the production process through control of information. The hacker class is the class with the capacity to create not only new kinds of objects and subjects in the world, not only new kinds of property form in which they may be represented, but new kinds of relation beyond the property form. Property, 
constitutes an abstract plane upon which all things may be things with one quality in common, the quality of property. The transformation of information into an ever more abstract form of property, abstracted even from its material expression, takes commodification into a new, as yet uncharted, phase of development. As vectoral production develops, the means appear for the renewal of the gift economy as an abstract gift economy. This is the gift of the hacker class to the design of a world beyond, or at least in part outside, the property form. Information has the ontological oddity that my possession of it does not dispossess another. The coming of the digital releases and realises this potential, breaking with the scarcity that reigns in the realm of things. So if anybody wants a couple of uh, English texts around this book, I can give it to you on a, on a thumb drive, yeah? Or on a, on a, uh, uh, a disc, and it doesn't dispossess me of it. Your ownership of it doesn't dispossess, dispossess me of it. But if I give you the laptop, I'm in trouble. You know, it's like, damn, that's like another month's salary to buy a new laptop or more, you know. So in the material world, we're constrained by scarcity, but information, because of digitization, has this ability to abstract from embodiment in any kind of materiality. The hacker class has a close affinity with the gift economy. The hacker struggles to produce a subjectivity that is qualitative and singular, in part through the act of the hack itself. The gift as a qualitative exchange between singular parties allows each party to be recognised as a singular producer, as a subject of production, rather than as a commodified and quantified object. The gift of information need not give rise either to conflict over information as property or to the strict forms of obligation of the old gift economy. Because the gift economy is why our ancestors stopped being peasants and, and ran away to the city, or it's one of the reasons. Because you're always obliged to everybody for everything in a kind of communal village setting. So you can see why that's kind of not attractive. But there's a new kind of uh, gift economy that's possible, and I think it's file sharing. Uh, or the sort of intermediate stage was, I don't know if it's true in this culture, but in mine, people are forever making like uh, mixtapes for each other or like mixed CDs. It's like part of like romance and seduction, you know, like you, you, you put, put together the songs that you want the loved one to hear, you know, or it can be a way of cementing friendship, you know, like these are our songs. So it's, it's the gift relation. It, it's got a weak form of obligation, but not a strong one. You're not obliged to a whole village. But when you think about file sharing, it's the gift relation abstracted. I'm making things available to everybody that I'm sharing stuff with via a torrent uh, or via another file sharing device. Uh, it, it, it sort of obliges you in a weak form to the whole of society, and that strikes me as a, a new version of gift economy. And while the commodity economy has dominated gift economy for a long time, the new technologies, I think, allow a kind of rebalancing of the two and a shift back towards a gift relation. Information wants to be free, but is everywhere in chains. The vectorless class sees in the gift a challenge not just to its profits, but to its very existence. The gift economy is the virtual proof for the parasitic, parasitic and superfluous nature of vectorlists as a class. And one notices this particularly in the United States, the extreme uh, technical and legal pressure that's being brought, brought to bear to abolish the gift economy in information. Uh, the, the thing that uh, they're lobbying legislators with now is to prevent uh, people from capturing analog outputs from digital devices. In other words, to stop us making backups or copies of, of anything. And the uh, Recording Industry Association of America has recently argued that there's no reason you should have a right to back up a text. And one of the arguments they made is if you break a glass, you don't have a backup of the glass. So why should, if you break your CD or your DVD, why should you have a right to a backup? So in other words, they're completely denying the new ontological status of information. They want to treat it purely as an object uh, and deny these new possibilities that technicity has released. So that's the sense in which one can say the vectorless class becomes a fetter on the development of these new potentials of, of the social sphere. The hacker class seeks the liberation of the vector from the reign of the commodity, but not to set it indiscriminately free, rather to subject it, subject it to a collective and democratic development. The hacker class can release the virtuality of the vector only in principle. It is up to an alliance of all the productive classes to turn that potential to actuality. This, as always, is the key issue uh, in the design of, of any kind of technicity. How can forms work across class differences? How and what can one make for an other? Hackers must calculate their interests 
not as owners but as producers, for this is what distinguishes them from the vectorless class. Hackers do not merely own and profit by owning information, they produce new information, and as producers need access to it free from the absolute domination of the commodity form. Hacking as the pure, free, experimental activity must be free from any constraint that is not self-imposed. In the rise of the hacker class, one can see then a synthesis of the critical role played by art on the one hand and by the proletariat, if I can use that term, on the other. Both were nodes in thought where the totality could appear from a point imminent to its own possible development as something else, as other to itself. The task of the hacker class is the art of the property question. And to uh, conclude by sort of twisting the Comte de l'Autrement around a little bit, progress is possible, plagiarism implies it. And uh, that ends the kind of formal uh, presentation part of the paper. But I'd be happy to discuss these things with, uh, if people have questions or comments or uh, <coughs> attacks. <laughs>